Welcome back to another episode of ATA Lore, guys. Uh, this is actually our final episode in a three-part series, so if you guys haven't seen those episodes, go back and watch those first for sure. Uh, that way you're caught up with the story and what we're talking about today. Uh, in this last episode, I want to cover uh, kind of puzzle pieces to help you guys come up with your own theories, and I'll go ahead and sprinkle in a few of my own as well. So let's start by going over probably our most suspicious character in this game, the Woolies. <laughs> I think Wooly is a very interesting character in game and definitely one of our biggest mysteries. So let's take a minute and try to think why the game developers might have chosen a sheep to be our main character here in the first place. So in the real world, let's go off of a couple of possible meanings. First off, in the real world, it's our first animal to ever be cloned. If the game designers picked this reason to choose a sheep, it could mean that Wooly is actually a clone of someone. Uh, this could be followed so far as to assume that Wooly is some clone of a part of Rebecca's subconscious locked away, maybe explaining why he acts sheepishly like a child the whole time. Personally, that one's a bit of a stretch to me though. Him being a clone of someone is entirely possible, but we need more puzzle pieces to know. Next up, let's go to what else a sheep could actually represent. You have sheep in Christianity that represent both suffering and of triumph. If the creators took this symbolism for Wooly, it could be that Wooly is suffering and being tormented now, but could one day be the evictor over Amanda. There is one scene in the game where you can actually see that Wooly has the ability to change the world like Amanda does in many scenes. Could he actually get fed up enough to change the videos and find a way to stop Amanda one day? Also, in a bit of a funnier take on what a sheep could actually symbolize, Back in the days of Columbus and the New World, sheep were really just seen as a walking food source. <laughs> so maybe Amanda is just keeping him close to be a snack for later. <laughs> Let's also not forget that sheep represent innocence and in that a black sheep actually represents a person that's disgraced in some way. I mean, as far as we know, Wooly is never listed on the credits for the show. Maybe Hamlin Entertainment sees him as a black sheep of sorts. With that out of the way, let's move on to talk a bit about Wooly's personality. I feel like this one is a very hard one to pinpoint. It seems that he tries to appease Amanda often and he is kind of a sounding board to try to give advice to keep the show sticking to a Dora the Explorer-like fashion and uh, keep the show running. It could be that he is acting sheepishly again and just wants to play it safe so that the Amanda demon doesn't get him. Or it could actually be his goal to keep Amanda calm and the show going for more nefarious reasons. Either way, it's really up to us to decide if we trust this cute ball of fluff or not. Also, on a personal note, I really like the addition of Wooly's new ears. <laughs> so we've talked about his possible symbolism as well as his personality. But let's focus on who Wooly could actually be if he were a real living person before he entered the show. He could possibly be a employee of Hamlin Entertainment that maybe got trapped here or even went willingly into the show. Maybe he knows the demon in Amanda could actually kill him if he's trapped here uh, by accident, so he worries about keeping Amanda calm the whole time. Also, he could actually be here to try to manipulate Amanda and have the show go on uh, for other reasons. It is possible that he is actually our chief neurological officer here, Larry Smith, a name that pops up when the credits for the show roll as Amanda and Wooly are getting his knee x-rayed. 
Maybe that's because he's Larry and currently in the doctor's office, so maybe he is finally showing up in the credits as who he really is. Larry Smith? Okay, so we have another theory here that I think is possible. He could be our missing boy from the letter addressed to Kate, uh, Jordan Cook. Personally, I think I don't believe this is Jordan, however, as to me, he doesn't have a special story reason that makes him more particularly suited to be Wooly than any other missing child. If we look at our missing kid, Lauren, there isn't anything that makes either of them more important here in a story sense. So in this case, Lauren could just as easily be Wooly. So far, I feel like this isn't the best story fit for those reasons. Why would Jordan be a special character and not other missing children in the show? We also have the possibility that Wooly is actually a demon or maybe even some kind of AI written into the story. It could just be a character here uh, trying to pull wool over Amanda's eyes. Honestly, my personal opinion is that uh, it's too early to call this one, as we need just a few more story hints. There are just too many options right now. So let's take a look at Amanda, the show, in a broader sense. Have you guys ever dived into Celtic lore? <laughs> well, now is your chance to, as I believe I know what Amanda, the adventure of the show is, or at least what it represents. My theory is that the show is a representation of a world beyond our own, a video world or other world, if you will, that is influenced by Celtic mythology. The other world in Celtic mythology is a supernatural realm where gods, spirits, and other mystical beings reside, possibly even including our mischievous demon spirits that we saw Rebecca reading off from the scripts. It is believed to be a parallel world to her own, although it's not really the best description for it. it. It's really a place that exists in a different plane altogether. I think the creators are looking at different myths throughout history to guide the story of our game so far, like the demon references or the tale of the Pied Piper. We know that they talked about a missing Celtic relic, and what other better fit to describe the show than the mythology of the other world? Additionally, there are hints throughout the game that suggest the video world is not just a simple TV show, but instead a gateway, maybe to something more mysterious. This could explain why items change in the other world and then in our own as well. The worlds are parallel to each other. In Celtic folklore, it's believed that certain objects or places possess spiritual energy or what's known as a thin place, where physical and spiritual worlds meet. This could be our TVs or even our tapes here. These thin places are where the veil between the worlds is thinnest and allowing communication with the other world. I think this sounds a lot like our hidden tapes. I believe the eyes on the objects in this world are souls taken into this realm, as we can see ourselves being turned into a piece of meat in the butcher's shop. Maybe they're what the demon in this world is actually feeding on. We see Amanda's favorite snacks to seem to be different meats or souls that the butcher has actually chopped up for her here. Whether you believe it is a representation of the Celtic Otherworld or not, it is possible the game creators could have used this as a reference in some ways to craft the show world here. It could be possible that the demon is actually trying to create a new reality in this TV world, one in which it has complete control and can manipulate its inhabitants at will. Additionally, in Celtic mythology, the other world often was depicted as a place of eternal youth where time moves differently and inhabitants are not subject to the same physical laws as humans. This could explain why the TV world game appears frozen and stuck in time and why the characters seem to be trapped here indefinitely. The other world is associated with great spiritual and magical power, and those who are able to access it are believed to gain tremendous abilities and knowledge. While clearly Hammond Entertainment is willing to take big risks in order to gain power and influence, maybe they believe they can control or manipulate the forces of the other world, or if you prefer, the TV world. 
The Celtic objects that went missing could play a huge part in the story in this case, so it could provide a way to potentially portal them to the other world. If you are a fan of Harry Potter, I guess you could say the crown of the stag in this may actually be a portal key of some sorts. My other world theory might be a bit of a jump for some, but I think it's fun to think about either way, even if it's just used as a reference, potentially. Uh, next up, we have our Aunt Kate. Let's try to come up with some puzzle pieces you guys can think on for this mysterious character. It's very likely that Aunt Kate's job was <laughs> related to finding and solving whatever was going on in this Amanda show. Potentially looking into some of the disappearances, how involved she is in this, or if she's working with someone else, it's actually hard to say. But one thing is clear. There is no way that Hamlin Entertainment would have liked her involvement. Maybe in the end, her secret job is ultimately what led her to her demise. Perhaps she was getting too close to the truth and was seen by Hamlin Entertainment as a threat, or she had no choice but to go into hiding. Either way, it seems she needs her niece Riley to finish up her job for her. One theory I have on who Kate might actually be is our thief Karen Onash. It's possible that Kate could have used this alias in order to try to find that Celtic artifact before others in Hamlin could. Could the group that she works with actually be called the Demons? Quite a group club name, if true. Maybe she believes the crown of the stag could help her enter the show, or perhaps she believes it's a good way that she could actually reach and find our missing Sam Colton here, who may be trapped in the TV show himself. It's a big fat guess, really, without more clues, but the trail is kind of cold for now. Let's look at our red guy character. Let's theorize about who he could be. Uh, he could potentially be Joanna Cook, who is now working with Kate in the group called the Demons. <laughs> or the red guy could be Kate herself. Uh, I don't really feel strongly about either of these personally, but I would love to hear what everyone else's theories are on this. If you guys even think that's a possibility. If we go with our other world theory from before, he could actually be a guardian or protector of the other world who is trying to prevent Amanda and Hamlin Entertainment from exploiting this world, trying to gain power for themselves. If this were the case, it's important to remember that the other world has many different parallel worlds in it and the TV show would just represent just one of these worlds that could be present in our other world. His red clothing could symbolize his role as a protector or defender. On another note, he could be a former Hamlin Entertainment employee who's aware of their sinister intention is actually coming here to recruit us into helping solve this. Or he can be here because he works with them and he is not happy about what we know. <laughs> I think there's a lot of theories we could come up with here and uh, honestly, we're missing a super great breadcrumb. Let me know if you guys think that you found it. Well, now on to Sam Colton, the producer of the show himself. Wait, you say, Maddie Rachel, what if the red guy is our missing Sam Colton, back to recruit us into finding his lost daughter, Rebecca? Well, I say, <laughs> that's a good theory. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> I like it. However, I say, what about the barn? Remember back on our episode one, I said, if you type the name Sam in during a part where a rooster shows up, Amanda seems to have a really big reaction to it. Well, so does the barn behind it. It actually looks over at the player directly here. Does this confirm that the barn is actually Sam or maybe just a solo person who actually knew Sam 
It's really hard to say without more clues. Let's get started with a timeline that we can all use to help be a tool for all of us theorists going forward. This one is a bit rough right now and probably flawed, but I need you guys to help me out on this one and I will update it in the description of the video below uh, as we all add to it. For now, let me put it up on the screen. So far, we know on March 12th, 1993, Kate is actually working as a librarian because we have this certificate to prove that she was working there at the time. We do know Rebecca and Colton are also from that local town and they know each other. On March 3rd, 24, the year 2000, Sam gives an interview by a newspaper talking about the success of the show. Also on that date, we find out that a recent break-in has happened and the Celtic artifact of the crown of the stag has actually gone missing by a group known as the Demons. On March 3rd, 08, 2002, Rebecca is seen at Hamlin Entertainment, likely after her father Colton has already gone missing, as he's not around in the video. So we have an unknown date here where Colton goes missing. This is definitely a big one to try to track and figure out. It's likely between March 8th, 2002 and March 25th of the year 2000. We know this because Sam was still giving an interview about the, sh the show before that date. And we know that Rebecca is likely by herself seen at Hamlin Entertainment on the other day. Something else that we really need to explore is when Aunt Kate goes into investigating, She, whether she is Karen or Nash or not, we should figure out when she started down this path of investigating the disappearances. And it's also very important that we try to figure out when Hamlin Entertainment actually acquired legal guardianship of Rebecca. Yeah, that timeline is a little rough so far, but it is just a start. And I'm hoping with your guys' help and a little bit more sleuthing, we can come up with a pretty good one. So it's been really fun to make these videos with you guys. And honestly, I've loved it a ton. Um, thanks for sticking around with me and covering the details and all of these games. And at least I hope this has been a good guide for figuring out the puzzle pieces for you guys to use in your own theories as well. Until next time, guys, I hope that you're all having a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>